Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to do a higher level topic uh, that is calculating, as we'll see here, calculating the effects of price floors on stakeholders and welfare. So we've already had a, a video looking at the uh, effects of a price ceiling. Now the IAB requires us to also do calculations with the price floor. So in the video that we've looked at regarding price floor in the market for wheat, in this case in India, the government will raise price. Here we can see from P2 to P3, P2 being the free market equilibrium price up to P3. And uh, that will increase the quantity being supplied by Indian farmers. But since the quantity of demand has decreased, that excess supply will just put more downward pressure on wheat and it would fall back to the free market equilibrium. Thus, the demand increases as the government is consuming that excess supply. So that's what we've covered in the previous video. So on an exam, you would get a graph um, and you would have quantities, I'm sorry, quantities on the x-axis, specific quantities. I'm using just variables of Q1, Q2, Q3 and prices on the y-axis, and you would be using your ruler to find what the equilibrium price is, where S1 equals D1, and drawing a line, uh, drawing a vertical line down to the equilibrium quantity at Q2, and the exam would also tell you where the price floor is being set, in this case at P3, so you would draw a line with your ruler up to the supply curve to see what the quantity supplied is at that quantity, and so on. So you would have to uh, use a ruler to um, make these measurements, and then from that we can make some calculations. So typically, um, they might ask you first to calculate um, the free market consumer and producer surplus, or and uh, the free market equilibrium price. So one, you know, maybe quickly identifying where is the free market. Let me just move this over slightly. The free market equilibrium. price, and also the free market equilibrium quantity. And you would just be looking at where the supply curve intersects the demand curve before the government intervenes. So where S1 equals D1, um, you know, we're looking at that intersection, and we see that the equilibrium price, price equilibrium, is at P2 in this case. And the quantity equilibrium, where S1 equals D1 and where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded, is at Q2. Okay, so you're just identifying those free market equilibriums. And then perhaps the question will move on to um, uh, asking you to calculate perhaps consumer and producer surplus, consumer expenditure, uh, total revenue. So let's just keep going. So two, consumer surplus in the free market. All right, the free market level of consumer surplus before the government intervention. So again, we want to be aware that the consumer surplus uh, follows the demand curve to the equilibrium price in the free market, P2, and so we must measure this triangular area, all right? A plus B plus C. So we're identifying that. And basically what, whoop, what we need to do is uh, see what the height and what the base is. So in this case, it's going to be P4 minus P2, as that will be our height, P4 minus P2 multiplied by the base, which is Q2 minus zero, which in this case is the value of Q2 minus zero, and all of that divided by two, all right? Because we are calculating base times height, which is a rectangle, and then we cut it in half to get the surface area of this triangle. So that calculation should equal the areas of A plus B plus C, okay? So be able to identify that on an exam. What about the producer surplus, right? Producer surplus is following the cost of production up to the here free market equilibrium price to which the firms will sell. 
and we're identifying that triangle, and we must calculate the, um, the surface area of that triangle. So three, oops. So the third calculation is the free market producer surplus. Okay, and so again, we gotta get the height. And so in this case, it would be the value of P2 minus P1, that is our height here, multiplied by the base, which we see here. So it's Q2 minus zero times quantity two minus zero. All of that divided by two, and that will give us the surface area of that triangle. And again, that is equal to the areas of D plus E. Okay? So be comfortable with finding that consumer producer surplus in the free market and later with the government intervention. What are some other calculations that could be asked of you on an exam? Uh, they can ask you consumer expenditure and total revenue. Okay, so another calculation could be what is the level of consumer expenditure? All right, consumer spending. Consumer expenditure in the free market is simply the price that consumers pay multiplied by the quantity that they are consuming. So the price they're paying is P2 multiplied by the quantity they're consuming, which is at Q2. And that is the level of consumer spending, which is essentially this rectangular area. The price multiplied by the quantity is a level of spending by households on wheat in India. So we've done that calculation. Another one could be calculate the producer, oops, the producer total revenue. So on the producer side, looking at total revenue for these wheat farmers in India. And again, it's a simple formula of price times quantity. That equals total revenue. So the price again is P2 times the quantity of Q2, which would give us the value of the total revenue. So we see that consumer spending and total revenue are equal, but later when we look at taxes and subsidies, we will see that they are not equal when the government intervenes with a tax or a subsidy. Okay, um, and then the last one might be social surplus. That could be another question. And you can just add up the consumer and producer surplus. All right, what is the social surplus in the free market? And that would be the sum. You can add the consumer surplus that you calculated before plus the producer surplus. And that would be equal to the social surplus. All right, and that again should be equal to the areas of A, B, C, D, and E. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E, which is this larger triangular area, is the total social surplus in the free market. So again, how can we calculate that? We need the, the height. So it's P4 minus P1 in this case. So that'd be P4 minus P1, which would be the height of this triangle multiplied by the base, which we see here. Here is the base, Q2 minus zero, the value of Q2 minus zero, and all of that divided by two, and that would be equal to the surface areas of ABC, DE, which is essentially your surplus, your social surplus. Great. Next, you could be moving on in your exam to the government intervention. So the government intervenes and they apply a price floor at the price of P3 in this particular case. Okay, so a price floor is set at P3 that becomes this perfectly elastic line that just runs across um, infinitely and that incentivizes farmers to increase their quantity supply up to point B and it disincentivizes households to consume wheat, so quantity demand decreases to point C. So we're gonna to have to do some calculations. The calc some other calculations could be, one, you know, what is consumer surplus 
after the price floor is set. Okay, so we need to be able to identify that in the graph, see where it is. And it's right here. So consumer surplus was this triangular area, but then it's been reduced to this area. Why is surplus reduced for households? Because the price has risen, essentially less savings for them. So how can we calculate it? It would be the height, P4 minus P3, P4 minus P3, multiplied by the base, and the base is Q1 minus zero, and all of that divided by two, and that would give us the surface area of A. All right, and we have calculated that consumer surplus. And on an exam, they might ask you, what is the change or what is the difference between the consumer surplus before and then after the price floor? Okay, and you just subtract those two areas from each other, and you can see what the change is. Uh, how about producer surplus? They might ask you, what is producer surplus? after the price floor is set. Here, we need to be able to see where it is. So we are going to follow the supply curve, and these farmers are incentivized to produce more since the price is higher at P3, and this triangular area then becomes the producer surplus. So we need to be able to calculate this triangular area. So here we see the height multiplied by this bigger base. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. So here we have the height, which would be P3 minus P1, the values of P3 minus P1, multiplied by this larger base. The base is running from Q3 to zero. So Q3 minus zero would be the base and all of that divided by two, and that would be equal to the surface areas of B, C, D, E, F, right? equal to the areas of B plus C plus D plus E plus F. And we can clearly see that producers are significantly better off as a result of the government intervention. Their producer surplus or profit has increased. What else can you be asked to calculate? How about um, total revenue? and consumer expenditure. Okay, So here we're going to see that there's going to be a difference now between consumer expenditure and total revenue. So how about consumer expenditure? Consumer spending with the price floor. That would be equal to the price they're paying, which is a higher price, and the quantity they're consuming. So now, households are paying this higher price, but consuming less. So price times quantity, this becomes the level of consumer spending that we see here. All right, so it would be uh, a price of P3, a price of P3 multiplied by um, the quantity. So here it's Q1 minus zero, or just simply Q1. I mean, it's, I can even take that out, sorry. All right, it's P3 times Q1. Okay, and that is the level of consumer spending. So consumer spending has been reduced. Remember before it was P2 times Q2, and now it's P3 times Q1. Next, they could ask you, what is the uh, total revenue now with the price floor? What is the producer's total revenue with the price floor? All right, and we know that the total revenue is equal to price times quantity. So in this case, Total revenue two, I'll call it total revenue two because it's different from total revenue one, which was the free market level of total revenue. This would be the higher price of P3 multiplied by a larger quantity being supplied and consumed by the government and household at Q3. So it's this larger triangular area that we see here. Remember before it was this rectangle and now 
it has increased, total revenue has now increased to this area. So again, we can clearly see that producers are significantly better off due to the price floor. Great. We're nearly done with some of these calculations. So we've looked at consumer surplus, consumer spending, total revenue, but what about, and we've looked at uh, producer surplus. What's left? Let's calculate the welfare loss, okay? Uh, the last one could be, what is the size of the welfare loss? And to calculate that, we must take into consideration the level of government spending to purchase the excess supply, all right, and subtract any additional surplus to either households or producers, and that will give us the welfare loss. In the previous video, we saw that the welfare loss is equal to areas C plus E plus I plus H plus G. Essentially, the welfare loss is this shape, this area here. Okay. So we're going to have to calculate this, and we can easily do that by first counting what's the level of spending by the government on the surplus minus this triangle, right? Minus that triangle. So let's go ahead and calculate that. First, let's look at the government spending, right? The government spending or purchase of the excess supply of wheat. And that would be equal to the price they pay, which is P3, price of P3, multiplied by the quantity they're consuming, which is Q3 minus Q1. Here is the surplus, Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 minus Q1 gives us the surface area of this entire rectangle. Great. So then we got to calculate this triangle, which is the additional surplus that goes to producers that was generated as a result of all of that government spending. So here we have the base, and here we have the height. So that triangular area, and we'll call that the additional, excuse my handwriting, that's the additional producer surplus that's been created with the price floor. is equal to area F. And area F would be equal to, let's take the height, which is P, oops, P3, minus P2. Again, that is our height, multiplied by the base, multiplied by Q3 minus Q1, divide by two, so we can get the surface area of that triangle. So essentially what we can do is take this rectangular area, whatever we calculate, whatever value that is uh, that we get, and then subtract this triangular area, or this calculation, from this. So once we get this uh, rectangular area, we subtract the triangle, and then we will get the value of the welfare loss, which is equal to areas C plus E plus I plus H plus G. Okay, and there we have it. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I will definitely put some notes into the video information section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.